Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Popcorn Square. I am your host Kage. With Neff. And Buttons. And today we are talking about Cavill and the Ministry. Or as it's more accurately turned, I'm getting smiles, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. The world's longest title, good lord. But um, long title aside, a uh, trailer has been showing on a lot of movies recently. Um, I recently saw the trailer myself. At this point in time, the movie is out. Um, I believe it's out. No, is not it out? No, not, not yet. yet. Oh, my uh, big crack. I, I want to say it comes out on the um, 19th. 19th? I yeah, believe. that sounds that sounds right. Okay, well, it, it, regardless. The, the biggest, our big release this weekend was Civil War. All right, all right. Um, so, Ministry, just for... Uh, Talking purposes, we'll we'll, we'll call sake. it too. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's what we're gonna call it. The trailer uh, is all we have to go on. And I saw it recently. Uh, we mentioned this film uh, in a previous episode, um, but after seeing the trailer, I am on board. Let's go. I'm ready to see it. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is a movie based on a true story uh, about um, fighting Nazis, okay? And we have a lot of war movies out there, a lot of war shows, miniseries and stuff, um, but this one kind of stands on its own because it really gives me strong vibes of Inglorious Bastards for anyone who enjoyed that film, which I did. I thought it was pretty funny, uh, but the action was pretty solid. Um, but for this film, uh, the main star is Henry Cavill, and um, we're going to see what he does after Argyle, because um, we at Popcorn Square love that movie so much, but not really. I'm so I sorry. I loved it! <laughs> Don't hate on my Argyle movie. I know Neff's got my back, uh, but uh, we're going to have a civil war at this table. No, uh, <laughs> no but, um, but, but seriously, um, the ministry, it, it looks like a good time. Um, I looked at the cast. I really didn't uh, know too many people from it. Um, you know, I think I think there are some bigger names in there Want that maybe not. Uh, we got Henry Cavill, obviously. Right. If everybody knows him from Superman, I mean, that's yeah, probably the yeah. biggest role I'd say from a popularity standpoint. Isla Gonzalez. I know she had a small role if you're paying attention in Hobbs and Shaw, and yeah. she's been in a lot of other mm -hmm. things too. I can't think of anything super big she's been in lately. I do think she was in Six Underground with Ryan Reynolds, that, which was a really good Netflix is, film, yeah. and you guys should watch that. Very underrated mm -hmm. Netflix film and very underrated action film. I know she's in that. I haven't really seen her too much as a main. Uh, a role i do think she might have been in the dust to dawn tv series um oh. i think she was starring in that as well playing some hayek's character um but yeah isaac gonzalez alan richson i believe that guy is in reacher on amazon yeah, Richard. Um, yeah. so he's been in a lot of things pretty decent actor himself henry golding oh. alex pettifer so H henry golding mm -hmm. uh he's been in a lot of stuff i've watched wow um and and maybe some things you guys have heard of but yeah. he was he was in snake eyes uh, the G.I. Oh, Joe Snake yep, Eyes. Yep. Uh, he was also Crazy Rich Asians, uh, main uh, leading actor mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. um, I think he also did uh, uh, Last Christmas. I want to say is the name of it. But I've seen him. I've seen him pop up in okay. quite a few movies and things. Yeah. So that's just a couple names to really list off uh, there to uh, give uh, you Carrie an idea. Ewes. Cannot forget Carrie Ewes. Ah, he yeah, was, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> so. I want to I want I want to mention <laughs> two names. What I want to mention two names. One person that is in the cast, mm -hmm. and one person that should be but isn't. Oh, oh interesting okay. spin. What you got? Okay, um, a German actor called uh, named uh, Till Schweiger. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Schweiger. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, funny enough, I just made the mention of Inglorious Bastards. He was in that movie. Oh, was he? Nice. <laughs> he was in that movie. Um, because if you need a guy, a German to, you know, speak German, be authentic and everything, <laughs> uh, you gotta have a German in it. Um, so he's in this movie. Um, we're going to see, uh, again, it gives me Inglorious Bastard vibe. We're going to see what kind of character he plays in this. But as far as someone who isn't in it, that should be, uh, would be, uh, Christoph Waltz. And Christoph Waltz was in films. He was also in Glorious Bastards. He was actually the main... Nazi 
uh, villain yep. in that film. But he was also the doctor in Alita Battle Angel, for those that have seen that. Excellent film. I highly recommend you go check that out. But he's not in this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I, I will butcher his name. Uh, Bob's? Alusan Mukan. Yes. So he he was uh, uh he popped up in um you know uh, some TV and shows. And I think he's actually in Doom. Strange New World. I think he that's the guy that plays. Jim, uh, is, Jim Jamis. Jamis. Yeah, oh, he is wow. from Dune, so that's okay. where if you if you're like I ah, he looks kind of familiar, that's where you saw him. Okay. He doesn't play a huge role in 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 that, but you know, he's there. So you might be like, yeah, who is that guy? You're like, yeah, that's that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so he's he's definitely, you know, this is some good exposure for him. Absolutely. Yeah, for well. sure. At, man, you want to talk about starting off having a good year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's done very Dune, well. Man. And I think he's, yeah, he's also the roles Star that he does Trek. play. Yeah, the roles that he, he does play, he does add to it. Mm-hmm. And he, he does what he's there to do. He needs to push the plot forward for whatever direction that might be. And whether he's a main character or a supporting role, he's done pretty well. He did very good in Dune. And I think he'll do very well in this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he's, he's definitely getting his name out there. Yeah, so th- this this film, uh, it just it looks it looks like a good time. Yeah, when I saw the trailer, I thought it was very interesting. Um, I thought it was very interesting that I saw Henry Cavill in something right after he had a film come out. So I said, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I looked a little into that. As Kage said, um, mm-hmm. my first thoughts watching the trailer was very Inglorious Bastards. Fun film. Doesn't take itself too seriously. I'm sure there's going to be some violence within the action of the film, but that's all about balance. I think this film is going to be one of the underrated films that comes out. I don't think they put a lot of marketing money into it, um, so that could hinder the box office, but I do think it's going to be a fun film and I think we're all going to go watch that but basically what I'm trying to say is when I did see that that initial trailer I did get a uh, very strong and glorious bastards vibes it seems like an ensemble of multiple protagonists and they all play their role and they're all in sync and I think it's going to be really good um but yeah I think buttons may agree with me as well what did you think from your initial uh from the uh, yeah, your initial the thoughts on the trailer yeah, yeah so I I like you said uh, it's it's a comedy guys don't go in there. It's not going to be serious. All right. I'm telling you right now. It's not a serious film. There's going to be a lot of heavy action scenes, shooting, blood, gore. That's what it looks like to me. Somebody's going to be like, oh, ha ha, joke, boom, explosion. Like that's, that's what it's going to be. And it's probably not going to be as extreme as Argyle was. So for those of you who did not enjoy the artistic <laughs> approach that that movie Bad. I don't think it's going to be as bad as the cat as winks. That Come one. on, <laughs> it's a comedy. It's, it's a comedy. Anyway, so uh, I think it, I think it's going to be a little bit um, just kind of more uh, direct in terms of you know the action sequences being what's comical about it. Um, you know, oh, ha, 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 a bunch of things just happened, and I said a, a funny pun. Like, I think that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be more like, oh, well, I guess he won't get ahead in life. Ha ha. You know, like, I, <laughs> I think it's going to be more like that. Yeah, um, they, well, and, I was, was going to say they had that, that one thing I, I do remember from the trailer was a bunch of Nazis sitting in a room. And they're telling a joke. Telling yeah. a joke or whatever. And the door gets kicked in. You see this giant, tall Muscle, muscle bound, holding a giant gun. Henry Cavill, he's like, ha 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 ha. I'm like, jeez. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. that sums it up. That and sums up the, the and that's vibe very of this much uh, Inglorious Bastards uh, kind of approach on the on the uh, on that standpoint. Yeah, I think so, it's going to be Inglorious Bastards without the detail and dialogue. Yeah. You know what I mean? um, and I mean, <sighs> it, it does kind of remind me of. Uh, um, there was a there was another movie that uh, came out maybe. Four or five years ago. Um, basically, it's based off of a true story. And this does say it's also supposed to be based off a true story. But the one that um, Colin Firth did, and uh, it basically was about World War II, a story from World War II, where they had to take this uh, body and plant it to like throw off the Germans and they had to like make this whole story about this soldier. Um, and he was carrying a secret message in order to like hide the fact that they were setting up D day. So, um, you know, hide all the troops and make sure the Nazis were, 
misdirected basically and the movie was wild and it was weird and it was it was great like I loved it because I like those kind of stories um and this one kind of looks like they're trying to do the same thing they're trying to say hey look here's this other group of people that were off the books black ops nobody knew about them because they were kind of like mission impossible where Mm -hmm. they're like oh we if you guys get caught you're screwed we we can't be associated with you you know we'll never take you know ownership saying that you were part of a british uh you know or forces or whatever been disavowed yeah yeah yeah, all the things right so that's what it kind of looks like to me is it's like oh you want this job done well we're gonna do it with my group of people and they're all these unsavory they're all these unsavory people that have been either disavowed from their own countries or nobody will touch them because yeah. they're too wild, they're like too mercenaries. extreme. Yeah, kind of so like So this is funny. I'm glad you brought that up, Buttons. Some quick facts here. Mm-hmm. Paramount Pictures acquired the rights to Damian Lewis's book, Ready for This, Guys? The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, How Churchill's Secret Warriors Set Europe Ablaze and Gave Birth what? to Modern Black Ops. <laughs> so this could be something that is loosely... Um, historical facts. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's actually going to add a spin to this as well. So I'm yeah. even more so interested So grateful now. they didn't name the movie that. Well, that, is, that would be a very As long... I was reading that, I was like, thank <laughs> You know, that, that does kind of remind me, though, because they have a, um, a series on Netflix, just to diverge just a little bit here. Um, mm. So there was a movie that came out. It was called, like, uh, like The Window or Looking at people through the window or something weird like that. And then Netflix did a spoof on it. It's like those who look at people looking through people at the window or something (laughs) like the girl in the window, looking at the people on the train or Mm. something weird. It's like this huge, long, ridiculous title, but it's a spoof. So it makes sense. This is, it's not going to be a spoof, but I think maybe the, the fact that it has such a long name is just a direct take from the book. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. And me reading that, it tells me that. Now. Yeah, We're yeah. Just, I'm so but glad at they. At first, I was it. like, "Why did they have such a long, ridiculous name?" And so now, knowing that it came from a book, it makes more sense. Um, what but, do you guys think about? Because we don't have any information on the budget, which is interesting. The film comes out in a week, and we don't have any information. If one of you guys could try to look up something and try to find something, pull in straws there, let me know what you find. There's nothing. Nothing. What do you guys expect from the box office with this? We talked about the marketing not being super strong for it. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think about this? Personally, I don't think this movie is going to be successful based off the metric they want out of it. I want to say, looking at the trailer, I want to say this movie costs 60 to $80 million. That's probably on the low end. Exactly. So you know what that means. Two and a half. 3x i don't know if it's gonna do that because i just don't think that i don't think people are that excited for this film and once again we're talking about another april release for something that really seems like a summer action maybe you could even argue that it should come out september october i feel like Mm -hmm. those war type-esque movies are really good for that time the fall time stuff like that what do you guys think i think this thing around july yeah yeah i think i think based off what what we know so far like i said we're speculating about the budget. I think. I think this. I honestly think this movie is going to be lucky to do 150 million dollars. So I have just the theory. I'm just spitballing here. Mm-hmm. The only movie we can compare this to is Inglorious Bastards, and that film uh, had a budget of 70 million. Mm-hmm. So within but ballpark that was with years what you. Ago. Well, true, true. Yeah. But but it's within ballpark with what Neff said, and that made 321 million. Yeah. So, but it also had Brad Pitt. And well, it had, had, well, it had. A, you're, no, that's a great point. It because that film had a bigger star cast, but it also had um, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Now, and that's a big. big that's a big thing. Well, it's not just the director; it's his style. Mm-hmm. Every director has a style. Michael Bay is all about explosions. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, who did um. Crap! What is the film with the lens? Who ha- he does the lens, lens flare. flares? Oh, that's J.J. Uh, Abrams. Okay, yeah, <laughs> right, right. And for Quentin Car- Quar- uh, Carantino, he is all about excessive, over the top violence. Yeah, uh, blood is splurting everywhere. And, and, like it just comic, it's comic, blood. like comically so. Like he's the yes. Mortal Combat of directors. <laughs> just gallons of blood Very per nice. hit. You know, as absurd as that is. And with this, we don't have that huge triple a cast we don't have quentin tarantino 
So we're not going to be do, we're not going to be paying that cast. We're, I mean, we're not going to be cast doing. This is a decent bad. cast. It's not. It's no, not well, I'm not saying it's a bad bastards. cast, but I'm just saying. But yeah. that's the only thing we have to go on because Correct. most war movies are dark and gritty and serious and mm-hmm. all that. I don't. Do you know? Do you guys know of too many comedy war movies? Well, off, off I mean, roof? not any in recent time. No, I mean, I think there not, was stuff in the nineties, eighties. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, you had Tropic Thunder, which oh, was yeah, yeah, that's yeah. straight up comedy. That was that's straight up comedy. Even, yeah, that's uh, yeah. They did what was that? that? What was that one? Well, actually, that wasn't really a, a, a war movie either. I was thinking of uh, that one where they go and try and kill the interview. Uh, where they, but that's not really a war. No, movie. that's a comedy. That's a, com- a comedy. Well, well like this, I know exactly what vein you're talking yeah, about. There's not like, really Tropic many. Thunder like Inglorious Bastards is the only thing I can think of. Yeah. It's the first thing that comes to mind, and so, you know, given that that's all we've got, like I feel like uh, that had a seventy mil. Yeah. So kind of around there, give or take, yeah. is probably what they're going to do. Maybe a little less, just because you're not doing. Well, to be fair, we don't know. Is it rated R? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, it's, so it's it's, so there's, it's a war movie. There's Nazis. There's gonna ha- there's gonna be violence. Mm-hmm. I mean, crap. We have Cavill with a, a minigun in a room full of Nazis. There you go. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. There, wor- there will in, be blood. In the word, yes, in the words of Jigsaw, <laughs> there will be blood. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. but yeah, let's. Uh, I'm interested to see uh, what it does. But it's it's not gonna have the. I don't think it's gonna have Impact. the over so the what, top. So what would blood. you say is your prediction for how it's gonna perform in the theater? Um, I think it's going to break 100 mil. You think it's going to go about one? And Neff, you're thinking I maybe said, 150? I said 150 at best. At 150 at best? It might only I, do 100. I mean, I just I'm, don't think it's marketed I'm that gonna, well. I'm it gonna really is high. I'm going to swing high. I think that this one is going to be very different from Argyle. Um, and God, as, long so. as, <laughs> as long as people didn't get turned off from Henry Cavill because of Argyle, I think... Me, I'm just gonna throw out two fifty. I think and it's I'm thinking it's gonna get two fifty. Okay. Yeah, like um I think it's gonna be a, a better story. It looks like it's gonna be a, I mean a completely different style in general. Mm-hmm. But I think war movies, you know, you, you talked about Inglorious Bastards, and I think most of the way that this film is marketed is it looks a lot like Inglorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. So for anybody who loved that movie, yeah, I think they're gonna see that preview peak. and they're gonna be like well, yeah, this yeah, looks, looks like a good time. Yeah. That's yeah. what that's exactly what I was saying when I saw it. I was just like, okay, it's and, Inglorious Bastards yeah. 2.0. And it, it kind of in. looks a little bit like the Expendables in the sense of, you know, I'm going to get my ragtag team of, you know, nobody wants, point. you know, to work with these people. And then, like I said, a little bit of the Mission Impossible, like, you will be disavowed yeah. if you get caught. We don't care what happens and to you. And a time period piece type yes. style where yes. it's like, oh, some people really like, especially history oh, yeah. buffs, really Anything, like that yeah. World War Two esque Who doesn't like to see a bunch of Nazis getting shot? I mean, yeah. sorry. They're you getting know, set for, ablaze. Yeah, sorry for killing for the And it's always got to be in a small. Anybody, it's always got to be in a small room. In glorious <laughs> bastards, anybody, it's yeah. Nazi. It's a, yeah, if you're gonna, if you're yeah. not gonna cry over anybody getting shot, it's gonna be Nazi. It's gonna be. A, I think it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> I think those are some really good estimates. Yeah. I I really want to see what this movie does because, like you said, if anything, it doesn't look like the movie's bad. It's just there's a lot that goes into making yeah. a movie and, successful. And and at the t- like you mentioned, Neff, you know, at the time of. Uh, the release is this going to pull in audience, you know, because, hey, there's nothing else to watch. Or is it going to be like, oh, this isn't really the time of year to watch that kind of movie. So, um, you know, we do have as far as what's coming out in April. I mean, me, this there's really not really a whole lot. I mean, May, May looks great. Like, Thing, yeah, things I'm are gonna at, things are, are gonna pick up in May. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So guys, let's talk a little bit more about Henry Cavill. Um, as far as what he should do next, I know there's been some rumblings of him going behind the scenes and doing some producer work. Uh, was it Warhammer that he's working on, Kage? Mm-hmm. Something like that. I don't know if he's gonna be starring he's, in that, I mean, but I know he's really hands on with he's that. He's very, very, very big. So do you think he should Warhammer. focus on being behind the scenes and producing or being in the forefront of acting? So I wanna say He I, could do both, obviously. Mm-hmm. I, I think he can do both. I think he can do both. I think there's a curiosity with this. Um, like doing a, a Warhammer movie. I think when it's just like, okay, take for instance, Dune. 
okay? Dune wasn't written, made by somebody trying to make money. Dune was written by an actual fan of the book, okay? Denis Villeneuve was a fan of Dune, and because there was a fan behind it, there was special love and care in how these films were filmed, okay? Yeah. How, how the cast was chosen. Everything was picked with care, and look what happened. How good is Dune doing right now? It's, it's doing amazing. And so that being said, if Cavill does, he does a movie about something he's passionate, Warhammer, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't, know much about, I don't know much about Warhammer, but I do know how big it is. I do know how old it is. I know how long. It, I, know the, I understand the resonances. It has books. There's, move, there, there's, uh, there's books. There's so many, so many games for this. And there's the tabletop version of course um and he is really big into it so i'm interested to see what happens when somebody who really cares about the material uh gets behind the helm gets behind the camera i want to see what he can do um we kind of had a a little bit of sense of that uh if you've ever watched the witcher he is a huge witcher fan okay and that's why when he was in it it was amazing that show was so good um, he understands the character, uh, Geralt of Rivia. He understands it very well. And unfortunately, there is that falling out um, over creative differences because Henry Cavill knows what the character... But you know what I mean? It's like if he has the passion to stand up to these big wigs and say, no, I'm not going to do this because you're not doing it right to the character, um, I applaud him for that. So I am interested to see what he can do uh, behind the camera. But at the same time... If he, you know, stayed as acting, I'd be okay with it. Um, we talked about Argyle in, in a past episode. Um, me and Neff, not so much fans. Uh, sorry, Buttons. <laughs> She's looking. Don't hate him by Argyle. No, uh, the cat. Come on. I will never let that go. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, like, I'm the, I know I'm not going to let. And I don't want anyone to listening out there uh, who has heard our talk about Argyle way back. Uh, please don't let that deter you from seeing this film. Um, Henry Cavill is a great actor. I think, I think he is the new action star of our generation. You know, back in the 90s, we had uh, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, uh, Bruce Willis. We had those big action stars. And I think now for this this generation now we have Henry Cavill. He's doing a lot of stuff. Um, it may not always hit the mark, but the man's got passion for what he does, and that shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Buttons, what do you think about that? I think I think it would benefit him to really go into the producing behind the scenes because then he'll really have a lot more creativity, uh, right. I guess, freedom, and he can actually do things the way he wants to do things uh, instead of being subject to a studio saying, you know what? Uh, like with the whole DC issue where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm in Black Adam, I'm going to be Superman, I'm really excited about it. And he genuinely seemed like he was really excited about it. And then James Gunn comes in and they're like, oh, well, we don't know what that management told you, but we're not going in that direction. He's kind of right. just stuck in, you know, la-la land there. Mm -hmm. But it's just like I think he won't have to really be dealing with that specifically if he tries to do things on his own. Now, depending on where he gets his funding from, that's who makes the rules. So he'll still have to deal with things behind the scenes but it won't be so much of oh you know Henry Cavill's getting embarrassed in the news media because I think especially with what happened with The Witcher how he was really uh, into the lore of it and paying respects to the lore I think sometimes people can be um, labeled as hard to work with from even yes. a male standpoint and I think that oh, can yeah. I think that can affect him too and it's like well the dude is a pretty solid actor he just kind of cares about the the you know it, basically what he cares about is nothing that's illogical it makes sense of course you want to make it fit with the lore and you want to pay respect to the lore because mm -hmm. if you don't have the lore then you'll have no story so it makes sense but he's not the one that funds it and at the end of the day the ones that fund it are the ones that can call the shots or the ones that are in the boardroom can say oh this guy's not doing what we want we have an agenda we need to to fulfill and if he's not sticking to it they'll get someone else to stick to it it's all so about i want to see like i like that he's in this movie i think it's going to be decent um but i want to see him try to do some more i guess even higher quality things again because it seemed like he was on a stretch where he was doing really big films and it's kind of dwindling back doing yeah. more shows and stuff like that he's not in that big theatrical release so we'll see what he can do but i think 
he can always do both, but I think maybe it I think it would kind of behoove him to really kind of step back a little bit and say, I'll let that die down. I'll come back whenever I feel like doing that. There's a lot of business on that end. Let me do what I'm actually uh, happy about, what makes me happy, and then I can actually, you know, present this, and they can't really tell me, well, da-da-da-da. It's like, hey, if you guys like it, let me do what I need to do. Give me the creative reins. You know what I mean? This would be yeah. great for A24. Mm-hmm. Hey. <laughs> but I don't think A24 would fund something like Warhammer because from what I'm looking at it looks like something that's going to be expensive to do yeah. so mm-hmm. he needs someone that's really got some real pool to really fund this thing but I think if he really you know steps back and does what he wants to do it'd make him happier at the end uh what do you think Buttons? Um well so I think you know you kind of talked uh a lot about you know what makes an actor choose their roles and Henry Cavill has been very vocal about picking projects that he feels passionate about, um, you know, because either they influenced him, uh, influenced him when he was younger, uh, you know, shows, games, movies, uh, books that he read, that he enjoyed, um, you know. And I think when you look at the type of roles that he's been taking since he started out, the first movie that I really remember seeing Henry Cavill in and I didn't know it was him until later uh, because he looks so different like you go back and you watch it and you're like oh yeah it is Henry Cavill but when you first see him you're like what that's not Superman you're you're joking like that's not him so Count of Monte Cristo he played Mm. the son um, you know, so he's supposed to be playing like kind of like a teenager, like an older teenager, like 16, 17 years old. Um, and you know, he, he has not buffed up yet, guys. He's not filled out. He's like skinny, gangly kid. Like, like he, that's, that's cause he's like in his twenties. Like, I think he's like 20, maybe 21, something like that. Maybe hell, maybe even 19 still, but, um, very young, and, and I think it was probably his first big role. Um, and Count of Monte Cristo was not a huge film. It didn't, I mean, it, it had a, it was a good size film, I mean, but it wasn't like it won awards or anything like that. But it was a good role for him as a starting role, and he, he actually had a pretty big part in it. Um, but again, as he's gained his popularity, you see that he's, being able to grasp onto these roles that interest him, like uh, Superman and The Witcher, and, you know, he even showed some interest in maybe some DC characters and things like that. Um, And, you know, he's partnered with these different studios and these different powerhouses. He's done stuff with Netflix. You know, he's been working on these Sherlock, uh, Sherlock Holmes movies, um, w- which would be the girl from Stranger Things 11. Um, uh, what's the actress's name? Mm, um, Millie? What was it? Millie? M- Millie Bobby Brown. Yes. yes. So uh, she she's doing like Enola Holmes. Like that's what all these movies yeah. are. So um, Henry Cavill plays Sherlock Holmes and, and Millie Bobby Brown is uh, Enola Holmes, which is uh, a series of books that was written where Sherlock had a brother in all the Sherlock books, but he also had a sister. And so that's the Enola Holmes um, uh, series. But... Even with that, you know, I think he, I think he chose it. And Argyle is part of the Kingsman universe. Kingsman being graphic novel, being Henry Cavill, being like that's how he got associated with the project. I think he, I think he probably likes the Kingsman series and was like the first movies that they'd done were really good. Again, Colin Firth attached. So I don't know. Maybe he's got like this. This whole thing with Colin Firth-esque movies. Like you said, eventually maybe he'll morph into Colin Firth type movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, again, is kind of like, uh, you know, you see these other you see these other actors who do these kind of romantical um, history period pieces. Colin Firth has done several of those. Like he's done Jane Austen and, um, you know, Shakespeare and stuff like that. So he's, uh, he's definitely done a lot of period pieces. But uh, Henry Cavill, I think, as far as this movie goes, it it falls in his wheelhouse of being, you know, I'm big, tough, brute guy, um, warrior, soldier, 
all those things. Because, you know, we've, we've seen him in the Mission Impossible movies. Uh, or was it James Bond? Did he do James Bond or Mission Impossible? Mission Impossible Fallout. Fallout. Okay, so that's what I got them big stuff. But yeah, so he was in that with the mustache, right? Yep. That's a very weird look for Henry Cavill awesome with the mustache. Film, which is why Fallout's they edited great. it out in Superman. <laughs> I don't see Jeed. CG'd, CG'd yeah, his whole yeah. lower yeah. jaw. Yeah. <laughs> no mustache for you. <laughs> but uh yeah, so I mean it's 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 not for everybody. He's got he's got the various looks. I mean it's like I said, it's been weird to see him morph from like awkward teenage phase to, you know, Superman to you know, kind Near, of this now he's got the classic mustache. Yeah. And the beard. And, he, yeah. and I just wanna say he he stands out. He stands out in this film, in the ministry, because it's like, you see all the Nazis and everything. He's the only, like, swole guy stepping oh. in. Oh, the, the guy, the, like, yeah, I was going to say. He just stands out. That Alan's reacher, probably bigger yeah, than him. Yeah, that Reacher that guy, he's like 6'3 or something. Those, those guys he's are going to be the ones... <laughs> He's like dishing out the most, <laughs> dishing like, out the most pain. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. You want to, you want to see, see you want to see Nazis getting taken down? Let's just throw they these gotta two have in a there. Great fist fight mm. scene Ooh. in there, where it's just like an all-out brawl. There's yeah. got to be something like that yeah. in there. So, I mean, as far as uh, you know, what he's doing with his career right now, I think eventually he'll get to that point where he wants to be behind. Uh, behind the scenes and and doing the directing and that the only thing that I'll say about him and and it's kind of what Neff touched on which is you get to a point where if you are unyielding with these studios these studios come and they tell you like hey we want to fund your project Mm -hmm. but but there's got to be some concessions made when it comes to the budget or when it comes to stylistic approach or you know cutting it back for content or whatever the case may be. Um, And if he is so straight laced and, and puts his foot down and says, no, it's my way or the highway, then he's going to have to put his own money up. And the problem with putting your own money up for one of these big productions uh, is, you know, that can bankrupt an actor. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I mean, sure they've got money, but it's not like, They've got studio money, you know. They can't yeah. they can't fund and produce and distribute a hundred million dollar film on their own. Um, you know, he would have to pull in, you know, uh, some investors and some other people to help him out. And if at the end of the day, it's not well received by the audience and the critics and everything else then he's going to be like, you guys just don't understand art. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, or like the fans, even the fans, like imagine how heartbreaking it would be for somebody who's like, I'm all about the fans, y'all. And then the fans just take a dump on it and say mm-hmm. like, it was awful. What was he thinking? What was he doing? This is not how I foresaw this going and everything else. Yeah, it's like, yeah. that would be crushing for, for him. Uh, I yeah, I hope, I hope he doesn't turn into uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, I was watching Driving Angry yesterday. I was, you know, honestly. Drive Angry, whatever it's called. Uh, It's a funny movie. I'm going to finish it today. I watched it before. Uh, Amber Heard, your favorite actress, is in there. (laughs) 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 So that that, was just, it's so funny. Nicolas Cage always has those, but we'll talk about him another time. He's even got (laughs) to dedicate an episode to Nicolas Cage. We really could. And I do love uh, Raising Arizona. Yeah, Raising Arizona. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, I don't know what it is. Like, I guess maybe like late 80s, early 90s, like that was his time. Like this Nick Cage, oh, yeah. The Rock, yeah, Raising yeah, yeah. Arizona, you know, like yeah. he had some really good gems. Face Con off. Air. Yeah, Con Air. Con Air face now, off. Now, okay, don't, Uh-oh, here we go. don't hate me for Con Air. Snake now. eyes. Like I've seen that movie. I don't even know how many times and it just kills me every time. The mullet. He's like... Well, not, no, not the mullet. Every time he gives that bunny to the little girl, and she's all like, mm. yeah. she's like got that look on her face, like, yeah. am I gonna get Hep C by taking this bunny? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's all he's all like dusting it off on his pants. It's got blood. It's and good stuff now. All over it. He's all like, here you go. Oh, and geez. she's like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and she's all like, give him a hug. And she's like, ah. <laughs> what do you guys think about Henry Cavill's approach to actually playing a role? I like how he plays the role when he takes on a role, and I like how, like we've talked about before, um, how he does appreciate 
you know, the character he's portraying mm-hmm. and even the backstory of the character he's portraying. So I think he's one of the few, because um, there's not really a lot of leading guys like that that well, I can really that think of that are within that age range, I'm yeah. saying. And so he's one of the few that I think really cares about well, what does this character think, and how would this character actually? It's not act? just another and, gig. That yeah, he and what, actually what, cares. what did the actual story say? Now yeah. it's different if someone just kind of, you know, came up with an original idea. And what we can see here is that I think maybe the idea around the specific characters that we're seeing is original. The actual content comes from a book, yeah. so that is the inspiration behind it. So I, you know, when well, I say that, I say this: Did he actually read the book? I'm pretty I, I sure think, he did. Yeah, and I think, and Neff, I think he's one of the guys that does that. Yeah, I think Neff. One of the things that you're that you've kind of touched on a little bit, as far as people around his age, um, that you know, I'm not saying they're exactly his age, but around his age, uh, that are very stylistic approach when it comes to um, their acting, like they're those those hardcore method actors, right? So I mean, obviously, um, like Heath Ledger would have been, you know, rest in peace. But you know, he was a big method actor. Like he got into roles. Um, and uh, another one, you know, most of these guys have been labeled difficult to work with when they become this intense about their roles. And that would be like Christian Bale. That was the first person Edward, I thought of. Edward Norton. Like they're they're kind of like both of those guys, like they get into these roles and they are pain in the ass to work with. I think the um, only one, and they, I love that you're, I'm going to let you finish on that because that's a great, mm-hmm. I think the only one that we can think of right now that uh, I would say can really method act to that level mm-hmm. and and is not seen as a pain. Um, and I'm actually going to throw in two other people. Okay. I'm going to say Joaquin Phoenix. That, uh, I that was also who I was really going to say. I not say anything yeah, about it. Like, I within was going to say him years, too, but his, he gets into roles. I say yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio is can method act if he mm-hmm. really wants yeah, to. Yeah, if he wants to. And I'll throw Denzel in. Denzel. I never heard yeah. anybody complain about Denzel Washington. You're absolutely right. Or Leonardo DiCaprio. No, and like this guy's a pain. Like, to, but we have heard things about other people. But yeah. that's just a couple. I feel they don't always method act, but they can really jump into it if they really want to. Yeah, I think I think when you you know, like you said, you know, you're trying to pick people who are close to like Henry Cavill's age. Yeah, not so many, Denzel, not many. Denzel's Henry Cavill's a little 37, bit, 38. Yeah, Denzel's so even a Joaquin little, Phoenix isn't in that range. Yeah, Christian Bale's like. 50, yeah, that's what, what is I'm he, saying. 55? So that's, why it's, that's why it's like hard to say because... Like He's when really you, the only one I can the, think of in that age range. Yeah, because when you Maybe think Robert about... Maybe Robert Pattinson. I think he could method act. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I Pattinson think Pattinson's get that get level. In yep. a, yeah, in a role. Yep. Um, and he almost knocks himself out of that range too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they're pretty much about the same age. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, when you're talking about like good method acting, I mean... I'm sure there's people that we're not thinking of, but sure. it's because, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe they can act, but they're not out there with the uh, fame. You know what I mean? They're not getting those roles. Perhaps I mean, the people Bill who are, Skarsgård. Oh, that's Ooh, a good. Yeah, that's a very well, and good especially because now you're talking about like let's see what he does with the crow. You know, we're gonna we're gonna get to see him do this more intense now because his brother. You know, he's been in quite a few things that he's had to yeah, pay, right. play, you know, uh, like the Northman, right? You know, mm-hmm. like those are very, and even he did a show, uh, Big Big Little Lies, I think it was mm-hmm. on, it was either Showtime or HBO. I think it was HBO. But, you know, that one he had to get into that character. And I've seen him throughout the years do some other characters. So you might sit there and say, okay, he might be more of a one trick pony because a lot of his roles are very like serious. I am. <laughs> I am caveman. I bang you overhead with rock and take you home. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so, um, but I have seen his, some of his other works, and it's very now. Same thing with like even some of the more serious roles that I've seen Chris Evans do. Uh-huh. Um, you know, he's he's put out some interesting films out there, but again, his meat and potatoes, his main things are like these actiony films. So again, when you're talking about like the difference between, you know, Henry Cavill with his action films is, yeah, he's predominantly doing an action character, but, uh, uh, and per, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher his name. G- Gerald, 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 right? Riviera. Uh, oh, Gerald. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. 
Um, so his character is, his action character or whatever, is more of a fantasy action. And then you have, you know, what he did in um, Fallout. And that's very, you know, kind of military boxing action. And then you have, you know, the action that he's doing like this in Ungentleman, Ungentlemanly <laughs> Warfare. <laughs> Say this that, movie. Say that three times. Fast. I know, right? So in this one, the ministry, as we were deciding, we were going to call, and I forgot. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this movie, again, it's very similar to that kind of uh, soldier, um, soldieristic, action you know, portrayal based. Yeah. action piece. Yeah. So I mean, in terms of depth of character and depth of acting and going into that method acting, it's still. Kind of like action, 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 Correct. action. Yeah, I haven't. It's not seen a bunch him... of range where he's doing something super dramatic. Right. Like I want to see like a real drama film. Yeah, I want to see like him do a drama. Yeah. And because I mean, like the amount of Mo- uh, Count of Monte Cristo yep. was more of a dramatic Correct. role, but Correct. again, it's it's such a small role. He doesn't really show a lot of range. Right. He's not the leading actor. Character. Yeah. 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 So, That's I mean, a good point you made, Derek. So it would be nice to see him. And and I, don't get me wrong. There's some actors that can switch back and forth between like an action and then a romance and then a drama right, and right. then an action film again. Um, and maybe he's been in some of these movies and I just haven't seen them. Like but, um, but he's one of them. But, you know, I'd like to see that range open up a little bit. But Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, you know, he's Doctor Strange. He's also done, um, you know, where he plays like a scientist in some of uh, of these other uh, films. Like he did, uh, what was it, Coders or um, he, he's Enigma. Done a, he's done a lot Enigma of Enigma Machine yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. No, uh, no, I think that's what it's called, the en- yeah. Enigma Machine. Yeah. Uh, so I know what you're talking about. Im- no, exactly Imitation what... Games. Wasn't that what it was? I think I no, the, 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 the imita- imita- uh, no. That was a different one. Yeah, I'm the imi- confusing I, my names or my movies. <laughs> no, because well, no. There is first off, there is an Enigma machine. Yes. And there was a movie about it. Right, and that and was I, Benedict Cumberbatch that played the main person. He played Alan Turing, or, who movies, made the Turing. Yeah. He made yeah, the Turing yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And it was about the encoding machine oh. um, used in World yeah. War II. So anyway. Um, he's got a huge range. He's, he started doing more just like Henry Cavill, where it's like, you know, you want to pick some of these passion projects and some of these extra little roles. So I'm, uh, and, and Ben, Benedict Cumberbatch has been doing that as well. He's been picking some more artsy and, um, you know, passion project looking films, uh, to kind of show, showcase his range not just as an actor, but also his interests. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see Henry Cavill kind of do the same thing, kind of stretch a little bit as an actor um, and see a little bit more of his depth. What do you of, think, Kage? Uh, uh, yeah, that, I think those are great points. Like almost get out of his comfort zone. Yes, in a sense. yes. You, what do you think? Well, when you, Neff, when you were listening, listing off uh, some method actors, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you mentioned it. I just want to kind of reemphasize on it, uh, Bill Skarsgård. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, because um, he played it. Right, the, it, yeah. it played it. Pennywise. I, right, um, I'm a sucker for behind the scenes stuff. I can't get enough of it. Anytime I watch a movie, uh, particularly sci-fi action, or I love behind the scenes stuff. And I've seen interviews with him, and he told some interesting stories. So the, one of the things, one of the interesting stories within it, behind the scenes, was they were gonna CG. If you've seen it the new one, uh, you see his eye going off different direction. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to oh, do that. Like the whole spider thing? Yeah, well, having the eye go different directions mm-hmm. and all that. And he told the director, I can do that. <laughs> How many actors on the planet do you know can do Don't that? Because we want CGI. you – we're going to do this weird thing with your eyes yeah. to make you scary as Pennywise, blah, blah. And he goes, I can do that. And he goes, what? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. So when you see that in the movie – they CG his color, the eye, the iris changing mm-hmm. color, but that was actually him, like moving his doing, eyes. and like that's so weird, like that you can do that, <laughs> and so he he those Swedes so and their he, weirdness, yeah, so he put <laughs> right, so he put that into his character, but then I I also saw a story where he was driving through L.A. or whatever, 
and he was in his car getting ready for his audition, and he was like, eh, like doing the the thing, and like he was at a red light getting with this it, ca- yeah. with his car window down, just going ham on on getting ready, and people at a red light are pulling up next, and like, what is wrong with this guy? Is he having a stroke or whatever? And like, they told because he's really drooling in the movie mm-hmm. where he does the the lip thing, yeah. uh, and he's like drooling or whatever, and it's horrifying because. Offset, he was doing that because he was trying to stay in character. Mm-hmm. And so when that movie was filmed, when they showed the big reveal when Pennywise meets the kids for the very first time, they kept him isolated on purpose. So when you see that in the film and the kids are terrified, they're legitimately terrified of him because he's tall, doing all the stuff, eyes going in different directions, walking all contorting his body. That's actually him. So that's method acting. He does this. And it's funny because... They he horrifies the kids or whatever and cut. Are you okay? Or and the kids are like crying or whatever, you know. But like that uh, method the acting, that John, man. John yeah. And and uh, or no wait no his name wait was it Will? It's Bill. 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 Yeah, yeah, Bill. yeah. Yeah, I always yeah, get Bill. him confused because there's got like four brothers in that group. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I, I got well, that information. I was well, like, well, the, I didn't know there was so that many of them. There probably Bill, there probably is a John and Bill William. And and I, <laughs> Todd <laughs> and Gerald. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, because I thought... No, wait, what's the father's name? Because the father's an actor too. Is that... Yeah, he was... Is that Bill let also? Let me look. Let me look. I have, to look. I, I have to look. Did we just butcher that? Could have. Uh, but yeah, I think while uh, Kage is looking that information up, and we'll find that, yeah, I think this episode stars. was freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think we're all pretty excited for the, um, you know, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Oh. I'm actually interested in looking into the book as well now that we got information on that. Um, but yeah, I think it was a really good episode. Does anybody have any more thoughts while you're looking that up, Kage? Uh, by the way, so I did just look it up. So first off, Bill Skarsgård is who played Pennywise, yep. okay. and the father is Stellan Skarsgård, who is okay. in Thor, who was in Dune as yep. the Har- oh, there's Harkonnen, a Sam there's Brandon. all kinds of stuff. And Gustav. Just, you made that up. <laughs> there, there's it's a, a whole... Just randomly Sam. Like, <laughs> it's a whole family a whole of lineage. actors. But, I'm telling you, they're, but they're like not huge. Talk about nepotism. Anyway. But they're not in bad, <laughs> they're not in bad stuff, so this, no, this family's true. doing something yeah, right. They got, some, they got some talent with them there. But yeah, he's... he's Yeah, they're all tall, too. Yeah. Damn Scandinavian. <laughs> <laughs> Ikea. Ikea. Anyway. <laughs> Everything is really? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. We had a great episode. If you guys are interested in watching uh, this film that's coming up with Henry Cavill and the other talented people in the cast, please watch it. And if you do watch it, we think this episode is going to be coming out sometime next week. Please comment. What did you think about it? We're going to talk about it uh, in depth once the movie does come out and we yes. all get a chance to watch that. So, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and join us for another episode of the Popcorn. Corn Square podcast coming to you soon. I am Nev joined with Kage. Buttons. Be safe.